Good morning, everyone. Today is a very exciting day because I'm officially starting my reverse diet journey. I'm entering the next phase of Marissa's health and fitness journey. When I started back at the beginning of 2021, I made a list of all of my like health and fitness goals that I wanted to accomplish. And I initially started out trying to accomplish them all at the same time, which was just not a good idea because a lot of them are just, they don't go in the same direction. And so if I had been trying to do them all at once, I would have just, I would have gone nowhere. So what I did is I took all my goals, wrote them down, and then wrote them down in the most logical and best order to achieve them in. So number one was my fat loss goals. We did that, lost all the fat that I wanted to, we're good. Number two was building a couple pounds of muscle, particularly my hamstrings. I always say that, they're just, they're still, we're working on them. Just build a little general more like shape in my body. I wanna get a little bit more lats going on maybe. Just wanna build like a couple pounds of muscle. And in conjunction with the building muscle, the other goal is speeding up my metabolism post cut. So that's like phase two where I'm at now. And then I want my next phase to be more like mobility focused, doing more mobility work, more yoga, just getting more fluid with my movement. And then from there, going into more like skill based stuff, like really getting good at handstands, maybe like more like gymnastic -y things. Maybe I'll take a gymnastics class. Maybe I'll take like a aerial yoga class. I don't know, I don't know. Just like getting really good at like, just like cool movement, you know? But yeah, this is phase two of that plan and I'm very excited to be, can you tell how excited I am? I'm just very high energy. I got really good sleep last night. But I'm so excited to be taking you guys along with me on this reverse diet. Last time I did a reverse diet, it was fun. It was definitely challenging. I took my maintenance from 2000 calories to being able to maintain on 2500 calories. I'm not quite looking to get quite there, a little bit lower, but it was cool. And we're doing it again. And I'm excited. But today's the day that we're getting back to the grind, starting to track macros again, like actively track in order to hit goals. I've been like loosely tracking to kind of see where my maintenance is, but we're like aiming for macros, crushing goals. Like I have, I have a target again and it's exciting. So today, since I'm clearly feeling it and have the energy to push myself in the gym and like my body feels like it's in a very strong place to be able to push myself in the gym, I really wanna give myself like a little bit of something extra. You guys know how I feel about supplements. I like to use them on an as needed basis or a just as desired basis. There's only like a couple things that I take every single day. A couple of them are things that I'm experimenting with for my skin right now, so aren't really generally applicable to most people. But other than my core stable supplements, which honestly right now is just one supplement, it's my probiotic. Other than that, my supplements change based on how I'm feeling and what I want to accomplish and all of that. So today, since we're looking for a little workout boost, I am taking acetylcholine from Natural Stacks. This is more of a supplement for mental clarity and I find for me, it really helps with like mental motivation. And so I feel like for me, that's really helpful in the gym because it just keeps me focused. It keeps me in the zone. So I'm gonna take a couple of these. What's the serving size? Three, I'm just gonna take two. So that'll cover like brain endurance and stamina and then to support physical endurance and stamina, I'm gonna take a rhodiola, which is just an adaptogen that has been shown to boost physical performance and stamina. That is going to be my pre-workout cocktail today. But as I was saying, the one supplement that I do take every single day, kind of regardless of how I'm feeling, is my seed probiotic. So I'm gonna take two of these as well. And I take this every day, not just to support my gut health, but because a probiotic is one of the best just overall health supporting supplements that you can take. Our organ systems within our body are not just individual systems that function by themselves within the body. Everything is connected. And the two biggest hubs of communication between all of the different systems are the brain and the gut. So your gut health can affect your brain health. It can also affect your liver. It can affect your immune function. It can affect your skin. It can affect your bone health. It can affect your heart health. It can affect your lung health. It can affect your hormones. Like your gut literally affects everything in your body. And one of the best supplements for supporting gut health is a probiotic. Here's a crazy fact. The human body has more bacteria cells than human cells. And this is thanks to all of the bacteria in the gut as well as the bacteria that reside like on our skin and everywhere else. But the gut is the main house of the wide variety of bacteria that work synergistically with our bodies to keep us as healthy as possible. And so the happier and healthier you can keep those bacteria, the happier and healthier you are going to be. So seed specifically is a 24 strain probiotic and prebiotic formula. They use you probably can't see this. Let's see if you can see this. No, 
It's too reflective. Basically, there's another capsule inside this capsule. The outer capsule is a prebiotic and inside it is the probiotic because you need prebiotics to feed the probiotics or the bacteria. So. It's an all-in-one. Seed is the first in a pipeline of clinically studied next generation products, and they have a lot of science to back up their product. You guys know who I am about the science and about everything that I put in my body. Like I research the heck out of every supplement that I decide to take. There's so much noise out there in the supplement space and so many brands doing it not optimally. So I love finding brands like Seed that do everything right, do their research. But I'll leave a link to Seed down in the description box below. You get 15% off your first month supply of Seed's Daily Symbiotic with the code FIT and NERDY. So check that out. I'm gonna go ahead and take my little morning cocktail and then we will head to the gym. I grabbed a handful of mulberries and some of the last of my candied walnuts to eat on the way to the gym just so that the acetylcholine doesn't do anything funny to my tummy. good but I am now very thirsty and very hungry so I'm gonna go have I don't think I have any kombucha I should go grocery shopping today I'm going to have some water make breakfast and then go grocery shopping <laughs> Look, eggs on toaster waffles I think is one of my better inventions. So much protein, so much healthy fat, carbs, delicious flavor. This is gonna be a staple winter breakfast for me. All right, it is many an hour later. I've just been working, but it's like four o'clock. I wanna get to the grocery store before five, before all of the, the crowd rolls into the grocery store and then it just takes forever to check out. So, I'm gonna go get some food real quick. And then, I wanna chat about what reverse dieting is and like all the people that should do it and what my goals are and all that good stuff. with a little bit of normal honey and a little bit of beekeepers naturals honey I'm running out of that need to restock soon but I wanted to sit down for a hot sec and talk to you guys about reverse dieting I realized since 
I'm starting this process again that the last time I like really talked about it was like three years ago three and a half years ago however long it's been since I did it the last time and every time I mention reverse dye I'm just like oh go look at those previous videos but there's a lot of new people around here so I want to take a second to just kind of go over like what a reverse dye it is who it's for just kind of like give you guys the basics so you know what process I'm getting myself into and whether or not you might want to partake in said process the first question is what is a reverse diet well it is the opposite of a diet. With a diet, you eat less in order to lose weight usually, and this process usually ends up slowing down your metabolism. With a reverse diet, you eat more, which ends up speeding up your metabolism. So usually with a diet, you have restriction or decreased calorie intake. Your metabolism is highly adaptable. If you are burning 2,500 calories a day, eat 2,000 calories a day consistently, for months on end, your body is going to slow your metabolism to only burn 2,000 calories a day. So if you go back to eating 2,500 calories a day, like you were eating before, you will gain weight. A reverse diet is the exact opposite. So instead of restriction, you are adding. And instead of a diet causing your metabolic rate to go from 2,500 calories a day to 2,000 calories a day, you can use a reverse diet to bring your metabolic rate from 2,000 calories a day to 2,500 calories a day. Now, to be clear, a reverse diet is not a weight loss diet it is a metabolism boosting protocol and the effect that it has on your weight varies from person to person so some people will go through a reverse diet and lose weight some will gain weight some will basically maintain their weight but weight itself should not be the focus of the diet since the actual goal of speeding up the metabolism is not directly weight related if you do want to lose weight and realize that you need to reverse diet you can always reverse diet first and then if you do gain any weight in the process lose it after once your metabolism is burning an extra 500 to a thousand thousand calories a day it's a lot easier to lose fat once you've gone through a reverse diet even if you gain a couple pounds of fat in the process everything will go so much smoother a lot of people say the reverse diet is the diet for after the diet I recommend it being the diet before the diet this way once you finish your reverse diet your metabolism is fired up and it is primed for fat loss losing weight is a lot easier when you're currently maintaining a rate at 2500 calories instead of maintaining your current weight at 1500 calories and as far as the process for the reverse diet goes, it's fairly straightforward, at least on the surface. Slowly increase calories while resistance training. That's it. That's the basic formula. So those are the basics of a reverse diet. If you have any questions about like what it is, let me know in the comments below. That'll be helpful for me because I am creating a full course on reverse dieting that I'm hoping is going to be like the most comprehensive place to find information on reverse dieting that currently exists on this earth and will ever exist so if i can get all of your questions i can make sure that it will cover literally everything but this brings me to who should even consider doing a reverse diet so the first group of people that i think should consider a reverse diet are people who have been dieting for a while regardless of whether or not that diet has been successful so I'm an example of this. I just finished a diet. I should probably reverse diet because my metabolism is probably a little bit slower than it was when I started. But this could also be someone who's been trying to lose weight for a while, but you've been plateaued for multiple months. If you're only plateaued for like a month, you usually just need to chill out, trust the process, keep going. But if it's been like three months and nothing's happened, it's more than likely that your metabolism has just slowed down to adapt to your deficit, and that's why you're not going anywhere. At that point, you really have two options, cut your calories lower or reverse diet to get your metabolism to be faster. I really don't recommend continually cutting your calories lower and lower and lower to keep losing weight. And then once you get your metabolism back up, I recommend following my mini cut cycle suggestion so that your metabolism never slows down while you're in a deficit and you don't have to even think about reverse dieting afterwards but if you've already done the damage it's not metabolic damage your metabolism is not damaged if it slows down it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do but for the sake of easy english if you've already done the damage to your metabolism and slowed it down then you're gonna need to reverse diet out of it. The second group of people that should consider a reverse diet are those people who have just low maintenance calories in general. Basically those of you who can't eat what most people would consider like a normal amount without gaining weight. If you think that you just look at a piece of pizza or look at a cheeseburger and you gain weight, I'm talking to you. First and foremost, living in a constant state of calorie deprivation is going to lead to you becoming deficient in micronutrients as well as probably not being able to hit healthy amounts of macronutrients. Really hard to eat enough protein when you can only eat 1200 calories a day to maintain your weight. But also if you constantly have to keep your calories low, you probably feel pretty darn deprived. Like if you think that you just gain weight looking at a cheeseburger, life is probably not very fun. Like how great would it be to be able to look at a cheeseburger and go, yeah, I could eat that and not gain any weight. I can eat that every day and not gain weight. Pretty nice to, to have that food freedom. 
Other people that can look into reverse dieting that it's not necessarily as critical for, but it's totally a valid option for, are people that just want to be able to eat more to maintain weight. That's why I did my first reverse diet. I was maintaining my weight on around 2000 calories, which for me, I'm quite small, is a very good amount of calories. Like that's pretty much in the middle of what calorie calculators would tell me to eat. And I was just like, what would life be like if I could eat 2,500 calories a day to maintain weight instead? So I reverse dieted. But basically, even if your metabolism is at a healthy rate where like it's within 10% of the calculator or whatever, but you feel like you constantly have to say no to foods or tell yourself, no, I can't eat that or whatever, you might wanna look into reverse dieting because it will give you so much more food freedom. Like if you could genuinely eat like basically a whole extra meal, like an extra five to 700 calories during the day and not gain weight. Think of all of those foods recently that you've said no to that you wouldn't have had to say no to. Going out with friends also becomes so much easier because you literally don't have to think about food. You don't have to get the invite and go, okay, like does that restaurant have a salad on the menu? Cause you know, I can eat 2000 calories if I have a salad for dinner, but I can't have a burger and fries and a milkshake and then have three drinks. If you have an extra five to 700 calories in your day, you have room for that. And then the last group of people that should consider reverse dieting is the group of people who maybe you're maintaining on a perfectly adequate number of calories and the number of calories that you need to eat like you don't even feel like you have to say no to anything like you feel great on the number of calories that you're eating right now but you have some fat loss goals which means eating in a calorie deficit in one way or another and when you restrict below where you're currently at you feel way too restricted if the amount of food that you would need to eat to lose weight makes you feel uncomfortable or restricted or just stabbed because it's not a lot of food then reverse dieting can help you avoid that but i would like to make dinner i am hungry really excited about dinner tonight making sliders i thought out those tiny like burger sliders that i got from thrive market that i showed you guys the other day that are like I think 80% beef, 20% mushroom. I'm excited, let's do it, let's do it. possibly the most exciting and beautiful thing that I've made in the kitchen in a very long time. Got four little burger sliders. Lots of good protein, lots of good fats, lots of good carbs. Got my fries. Ooh, I need to put ketchup on here because these are carrot and broccolini fries and I want to dip in my ketchup. Now, buffalo sauce that I put on top of the veggies has been my secret. That plus nutritional yeast, ugh. Like just transform any veggie into just delicious crispiness with those things. It's just, it's a miracle. So I'm gonna go dig into my tiny little burgers. I'll catch up with you in a hot sec. So the original plan was to make a fancy little hot chocolate for dessert, but honestly, I am so full. That was quite a big dinner. Oh wow, I didn't even look at the calories as I was logging it. It was um a thousand calories, so I'm just, I'm really full. Instead, I'm having one square of this chocolate because it's genuinely just so rich that one square is enough for me. And then this box has been sitting in my cabinet for literally ever and it just has one gluten-free graham cracker in it. So I'm gonna eat this so that I can throw the box away, basically. Pro tip if you're gluten-free and want good graham crackers, these are amazing. So let's talk about my personal goals with this reverse diet and my first steps that I'm taking to get there. So as I've said multiple times, I don't think I want to get all the way up to 2,500 calories. My goal, like I think I want to at minimum hit 2,250. I think I'm gonna shoot for 2,350 and if I go past it, great. If not, I'll be super stoked from at 2,350. And during this process, I would like to gain about three or four pounds of muscle and obviously minimize fat. I wouldn't be surprised if I put on a little bit of fat in the process and that doesn't really scare me if that does happen But ideally I'm gonna put on more muscle than fat. That's kind of my end goal And the last two weeks I tried tracking my calories to see what my current maintenance is with my lower weight and having gone through a Extensive cut it didn't quite go 
according to plan a tracking was really hard because i was eating out a lot because i wasn't home a lot i was at my parents house for an entire week out of the last two weeks and before that i don't know it was hard to track a lot of my food at least hard to track super accurately and then i actually haven't <laughs> weighed myself because there's been just a lot of things going on that would have affected my body weight and i haven't felt like my body's gotten to a stable point where i could weigh myself and be like yes like i am confident this is my actual weight i'm not like inflamed i'm not bloated i'm not whatever i'm not whatever but in the last two three weeks i was getting over being sick not with covid just had like a weird nose thing my skin flared and so i was a little bit inflamed because of that and then my digestion has been super wonky not gonna get into the gory details but let's just say weighing myself probably would not be inaccurate depiction of my weight and now i'm in my late luteal phase of my menstrual cycle so my weight is almost definitely increased compared to where it would be not in the late luteal phase because i don't really know my maintenance my plan is just to start at kind of the low end of what my cutting calories were and then reverse up from there and then every week or potentially every other week depending on how my body is responding i will increase my calories by 50 calories or 100 calories like if it feels like i'm going too fast it feels like i'm gaining more fat than muscle then i'll back off to 50 calories every other week but if i feel like my body's responding really well i'm like getting super super strong really fast then i might bump up the speed so we'll see it'll be a little bit variable but basically i'm starting at where I ended my cut calorie wise because I don't know what my actual maintenance is. And if I'm starting a little bit under my maintenance, like it's really not a big deal. It'll just take an extra couple weeks and that's fine. I really have no deadlines or timeline for this. So we're chilling. As far as tracking my macros and calories go, I am gonna be aiming for a weekly average. I'm gonna use my macro averager tool to hit that on average, but then on the day to day, I'm gonna be super flexible, but at the same time, I don't wanna to be too far under on calories, on protein, or on carbs. So I think I'm gonna aim for like roughly minimum 75 grams of protein, minimum 125 grams of carbs, and kind of go from there. My actual goals are higher than that. I just don't want any particular day to be like drastically under on any of those because I don't wanna affect my workout recovery. But yeah, that's the plan. Today is day one of the plan. I'd say it went pretty well. 87 grams of protein, 147 grams of carbs, and 109 grams of fat. I really do love fat. Just, fat makes me happy. And I think I'm gonna wrap up here. I'm gonna have one more tea that will have honey in it, but other than that, I'm not gonna be having anything else with calories. It's honestly really late, it's almost 10. So I usually don't eat this late because it's not great for your sleep. But alas, I did what I had to do today. If you do have any questions, comments, concerns about reverse dieting, please do let me know down in the comments below. While you're down there, check out the Seed Symbiotic and get yourself 15% off with the code FITANDNERDY. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. It really does support me and my channel. I really genuinely appreciate it. Please share this video with your friends, your family, and your neighbors. If you wanna see more videos from all about health and fitness check them out over here to see future videos make sure you hit that subscribe button hit the little notification bell so you get notified when i post a video and i will see you very soon bye